Okay, a lot of you guys watch me uh, catch these fish in these big rivers like the Mississippi River, Ohio River, Tennessee River and such, but uh, I know there's other places to catch catfish, but I just don't have access to banks and stuff like, like most guys. But I do have a friend on YouTube, uh, guy's hat on right here, Muddy River Catfishing. Check him out, Chris Flores. He can catch fish out of places I wouldn't even know to look for a catfish. So uh, check him out, Muddy River Catfishing on YouTube. Hey guys, we're on the Kanawha River in West Virginia. We're about five miles up from the confluence of the Ohio River. The Ohio River's kind of blown out right now. We got three, four and a half, five mile current. If I come slipped up in here, we're gonna try to catch some flatheads today. Uh, the bayou should be on. We're right around 65 degrees. The water in the Kanawha is just kind of settled down, starting to clear a little bit. So hopefully we'll have some good luck. Stay tuned, we'll see what we can catch. There he is. I do believe this is my flathead. He's a skipjack head, he's like. Circle hook doing what he needed to do. Nice flathead. We'll turn him loose again. We don't keep these fish all the time. I mean, if I wanted to keep some, we could keep them, but if you're not going to eat them, why, why keep them? Ooh. He had some more fight in him. All right, we're going to get baited up and put him back out. It's a good flathead day. As I've been fishing for these fish today, uh, you kind of got to make some different cuts on your bait to see what they're after. So far today, I've caught fish on heads and I've caught fish on fillets. I haven't had a, a nibble or a bite on chunk bait. So that's what we're concentrating today is uh, heads and fillets. Now, a lot of guys ask me too, how? Why, how do you catch them in the daylight like this? Well, flatheads are an opportunist fish just like the rest of them. If you put it in front of them, they're gonna eat it. Now what I do, I uh, like to look for when I'm fishing for them in the daytime is the deeper water adjacent to structure and, and cover like you see along the bank right here. Um, most parts of this river in a situation like this is only about 20, 22 foot. But I found this certain spot in the, right here that is 27 to 32. Uh, so we've kind of just put up camp right here, hoping that the fish, after they've eaten and, and strolled along the banks at nighttime, they've come back down to their, their uh, house, I guess, wherever they're going to stay for that, that part of the day. And, and today it looks like it's going to be this deep, deep little hole that we found. So uh, that's how I'm catching them in the daytime. I'm just looking for them where they kind of just lay and rest until they're ready to feed later on. But just as I said, they are opportunists and if you put it in front of their face or somewhere near, they, they're, gonna, they're gonna come to it. So we're gonna put the baits back out there and I'm gonna put nothing but fillets and heads. Because so that's what they seem to be seem to be wanting. Don't be afraid to leave a little gut and something in that head right there. And another thing I'm a real stickler at, as you see, I got skipjack all over my boat, but I do not like to throw this what I'm not gonna use or what is used and just waterlogged and, and but what I'm not going to use, I do not throw it back in until I'm ready to leave this area. I don't see any sense in throwing all this out for the fish to eat, and then they don't eat my hook. They eat my bait with the hook on it, so uh, I leave all my junky, junky pieces in the boat till I'm ready to leave the spot. All right, 
I'm going to rebate this one and cast him out. Now one, one problem with the fillets I find is the channel cats seem to like them too and they'll pick them, but man, when a flathead grabs a fillet, he generally hangs on to it. I put one whole fillet on and this is how I like to hook it. Through one part of the skin and back out the other side. Watch your scales again. Keep your scales hitting the tip of the hook and you're good to go. Let's sling him. Sling him out there. Take these heads, this head and this other fillet, pitch him back out. Alright, well, hey, the way I hook my head is through the nostrils here, and you gotta be careful not to break that bone. Get right back out the other nostril. That way it can't really hook back into itself. It can in, a, in some, from certain instances, but that's one way it seems to do best. And you can also hook them from underneath the chin and through one of the nostrils also and close the mouth, but this is, seems to work best for me. To keep from getting slack in your line, I like to kind of feel my weight as, it, as it's going down. And once you feel it hit the bottom, I like to raise it up once or twice, pull all the slack out of it, and then put it in your rod holder. That way the fish is pulling directly on the rod and not a big bow in your line that created as it fell in the, in the beginning. He's swimming up river fast too. This is going to be a nice one. And he got on a big old head. He's swimming straight up river, as fast as he can go. Look at him right here. Oh, now he's gonna be a fight. Now it's gonna be a fight. Oh, look at him. Taking drag. Drag. Catch up with Guys, if you're ever wondering what kind of rod to get when you're chasing these trophy cats, Tangling with Catfish makes an excellent rod. Tanglingwithcatfish.com. All right, here we go. He's mad. He's mad. Right, he's coming up. He should be blowing bubbles here in a second. We're catching him deep again. Hey, oh, look at it. Another nice one. Another nice one. Boy, isn't that pretty. They've been in the mud. They've been laying tight. This is probably one of the first days they've come out and been pretty active because of the weather. But he hit a big old head again. Oh, isn't that nice? He's not ready to give up yet. We pulled up on that this spot here. I seen two big fish sitting next to a log on our depth finder. And we've sit here, I guess, for about an hour. I've caught one other fish and then this one right here. So maybe I pulled them off that log. All right. Oh, 
parents, you know. There we go. Another nice Kanawha River fish. Flathead. Great looking fish. Let's turn him back so somebody else can catch him. There he goes. All right, there's two fish in the same spot, but I like to fish new water. So I think we're just gonna pick up and head somewhere else and find, find another little piece of water. And I'm gonna mark this as a waypoint. Like I said, this is a trough down through here. It's about 20 foot closer to bank, drops into about 34, back up into about 29. So you've kind of got a trough and those fish are laying in that trough. All right, let's move on. This is a pretty decent fish, but he hit like a little bitty thing. The bite is, the bite is odd today. Yeah, he was biting it like a little channel cat. And I had to reel down on him, expecting a little channel cat. I don't know how I got him hooked either. A lot of times you reel down on them big ones. They don't get hooked real well. Oh, I'll take a little drag. There he comes. He liked that fillet, that skipjack fillet. Maybe you got love in flatheads. I hate to put him in the net. He's still fighting. He's still wanting to go to the bottom. We're in about 30 foot of water. That's what we caught him in. down on this guy because he was just barely biting but that must add demon circle got him where he needed to got him on a skipjack fillet he come in about 30 foot of water on a skipjack fillet Man, what a, what a nice fish. What a nice fish. 